Today on the Matt Wall Show, the media is breathlessly reporting that Trump refused to condemn white supremacists in last night's debate. It's a lie. He did condemn them. He's already condemned them. He's condemned them many times. Meanwhile, Joe Biden and the rest of the Democrats have actually never condemned the violent extremists in their midst, like BLM and Antifa. That's the real outrage, considering that these groups are currently burning down our cities. We'll talk about that. Also, five headlines, including an unintentionally hilarious fact check on a Babylon Bee article. You have to hear this one to, to really believe it. And in our daily cancellation, we'll cancel the Atlantic for trying to make a scandal out of the fact that Trump allegedly makes fun of televangelists in private. Who doesn't? All of that on the way. First, a word from Duke Cannon. Uh, like a lot of you, you know, I've tried different body washes from the store and I'm always disappointed in them. You know, they're expensive. They often smell too fruity for my taste and they just, they don't get the job done. But that's why I use Duke Cannon's big ass brick of soap. What else needs to be said about it? I mean, it's, it's a big ass brick of soap. It's exactly what it claims to be. Very simple to the point. You know, that's what you want as a man. Now this is part of their Frontier 40 collection and all of these products have scents that will take you straight into the rugged, untouched wilderness. Each of the four scents in the Frontier 40, Campfire, Fresh Cut Pine, Leaf, Leather, and Midnight Swim come in a, a, in a 10 ounce brick that will leave you smelling like the best elements Mother Nature has to offer. And of course, you know, I'm also gonna be using Duke Cannon's beard products. Uh, it's, it's true scientifically that beards are bulletproof, indestructible, they grant you immortality, all of that's true, but that doesn't mean you, you, you don't take care of them. That doesn't mean that you don't need to groom them. That's why I use uh, Duke Cannon beard oil, beard balm, beard soap, beard wash. Yes, all of them every day. You got a problem with that? But listen, even if you don't have a beard, as disgraceful as that is, you should still try the Frontier 40, um, though it may be tempting to you know, get off the grid. Let's be honest, we may not have the time. Instead, satisfy your wanderlust right from the shower with the nature-inspired sense of, of the four big-ass bricks of soap in the Frontier 40. Visit DukeCannon.com. Use promo code Walsh. 10 for 10% off your next order. Free shipping with orders over $20. A selection of Duke Cannon's products are also available at your local Target. So go pick those up now. All right, now there are many negative um, but honest headlines you could write about Tuesday night's semi-coherent shouting match between Donald Trump and Joe Biden and Joe Biden's de, fa de facto spokesman, Chris Wallace. But the media has settled on a headline ripped straight from their own fever dreams. Um, uh, NPR says, from the debate stage, Trump declines to denounce white supremacy. Trump refuses to denounce white supremacy in chaotic debate, according to the New York Times. Uh, Trump doesn't denounce white supremacists and militias during debate, ABC News insists. Politico puts it this way, Trump's jarring white supremacist moment launches an online furor. Even Fox and Friends has g gotten in on the action. Uh, listen to this. If you're going to say that President Trump was rude, uh, there was only one person who uh, called the other one a clown, a racist, uh, the worst president ever, and told to shut up. And that was Joe Biden on Donald Trump. But Donald Trump blew the biggest layup in the history of debates by saying not condemning white supremacists. I don't know if he didn't hear it, but he's got to clarify that right away. That's like, are you against evil? Um, why the president didn't just uh, knock it out of the park, I'm not sure. But... None of this is actually true. One need only watch the relevant clip from the debate to see that President Trump did indeed denounce white supremacists. Here it is. Listen for yourself. You have repeatedly we criticized the, the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left-wing extremist right. groups. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha, and as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to do specifically that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, what, you you what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and right like me to condemn? White proud supremacists boys. and right the proud, proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by. Okay, let's go through the transcript. Wallace, you have repeatedly criticized the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left-wing extremist groups, but are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we've seen in Kenosha and we've seen in Portland? Trump, sure, I'm willing to do that. Biden, then do it. Wallace, go ahead, sir. Trump, 
I would say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right. Wallace, so what are you saying? Trump, I'm willing to do anything. I want, I want to see peace. Wallace, then do it, sir. Biden, say it, do it, say it. Trump, do you want, do you want to call them? What, what do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a name. Go ahead. Who would you like me to condemn? Wallace, white supremacists and right wing militias. Biden, Proud Boys. Trump, uh, Proud Boys, stand back and stand by. Okay, now, so you've heard it. I read the transcript to you. There it is. I may not be the smartest man, okay, but it seems to me that when somebody asks, are you willing to condemn white supremacists, and you respond, sure, as in, yes, I condemn them, you have condemned them right there. The stand back and stand by comment was weirdly phrased, but this is Trump we're talking about, first of all. And also, it should be obvious to any any honest person attempting to, to parse Trump's words that he meant stand down, which is the phrase that Wallace used. Unfortunately, there aren't very many honest people in the media, so instead they're pretending to believe that Trump was rallying his white supremacist militia horde and telling them to stand by for the coming invasion. But this is all beside the point. The problem is the question itself, not the answer. Being asked to condemn white supremacists is like being asked to condemn that you're a pedophile. The point of the question is to create the association in the audience's mind. By condemning or denying in that context, you are implicitly legitimizing the premise that there is some sort of potential connection between you and the evil thing. Now, it's claimed that Trump must condemn white supremacy because, as Biden has charged in the past, Trump has never once done so. That's flat out untrue. Okay, Going back to the infamous Charlottesville rally in 2017, Trump said that he, quote, condemns in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence on many sides. Two days later, he said in a statement, we condemn in the strongest possible terms this egregious display of hatred, bigotry, and violence. It has no place in America. And as I have said many times before, no matter the color of our skin, we all live under the same laws. We all salute the same great flag. and We are all made by the same almighty God. We must love each other, show affection for each other, and unite together in condemnation of hatred, bigotry, and violence. We must rediscover the bonds of love and loyalty that bring us together as Americans. Racism is is evil, and those who cause violence in in its name are criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups that are repugnant to everything we hold dear as Americans. The next day, in a press conference, we're not done yet, Trump again emphasized that neo-Nazis and white nationalists, quote, should be condemned totally. Condemned totally. That's three condemnations in the span of four days. How many times does does Trump need to explain that Nazis are bad? Does he have to deliver an address from the Rose Garden every morning to remind us that he still doesn't like racists and Nazis? Hey, by the way, guys, I'm still opposed to Nazis. Just letting you know. Okay, have a great Thursday. Meanwhile, Nazis and white supremacists are not the ones who have been rampaging in our streets for months on end. They are not the ones who've looted and burned and killed and caused billions of dollars of property damage this summer alone. As Trump correctly pointed out, left-wing extremist groups are the real threat we face. And Democrats, including Joe Biden, have not only refused to condemn these dangerous forces, but have explicitly promoted them and supported them. Biden last night came valiantly to, to Antifa's defense, saying they are an idea, not an organization. Listen. I'll tell you what, somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left, because this is not a right-wing own, problem. This, this is a left-wing problem. This is a left-wing problem. Go ahead, go ahead, white Antifa's an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got to be Not kidding. malicious. That's what oh, his an idea. FBI, his okay. FBI director Gentlemen, said. Well, we're then gonna, you know what? No, no, that we're, done, we're done, sir. And if Democrats are reluctant to condemn Antifa, as, Trump, as Biden... Sh- clearly was there. We can be sure that they will never and have never whispered a single word of criticism, however mild, towards Black Lives Matter, a radical, racist, Marxist, extremist group which seeks to destroy the nuclear family, get rid of the police, among other stated goals, and whose leaders openly encourage looting and violence. No group in recent history has damaged this country physically and in every other sense to the same degree as BLM. Three years after the fact, you know, the media still hasn't gotten over Trump's very fine people phrasing, which they are willfully misinterpreting, 
For months, though, Democrats have been telling us that there are very fine people among the rioters, looters, and murderers in the BLM Antifa mob. Indeed, listening to them tell it, they're all fine people fighting for truth and justice by burning down their local convenience store and beating random pedestrians half to death. They are the ones who should be issuing condemnations. But they will never be forced to condemn nor asked why they are not condemning. That's the advantage of having nearly all of the mainstream media on your side, which we saw again starkly illustrated last night. Let's get to our five headlines. You know, I've been telling you about rockauto.com um, for a long time. That's because I'm trying to save you money, save you money and time. Well, I'm not. I mean, they, they are. I guess I can't really take credit for it. But there's just no reason to go to the auto body store um, and spend hours on that, uh, uh, you know, task, that errand. When you consider you got to get in the car, drive there, walk around the store, do all that. No reason to do it when you got rockauto.com. Um, it's, it's so much easier than walking into a store. So much easier than going to a mechanic. Also going to be a lot cheaper. You just go to rockauto.com. They always have the lowest prices possible. They're not going to change the prices. They're not going to, you know, figure out how much they think they can uh, milk you for and then and then go for that. No, um, they're going to give you the lowest prices they possibly can. Rockauto.com. Look, they're a family business, honest business. They've been serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Go to rockauto.com right now to shop for auto and body parts from hundreds of manufacturers. Best of all, prices at rockauto.com are reliably low. Uh, they're the same for professionals, same for do-it-yourselfers. And there's just no reason to spend twice as much for the same parts. Twice as much for the same parts or twice as much for not even the part you're really looking for. Uh, the rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate. You can quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and uh, choose the brand, specifications, prices that are right for you. And uh, you know what I like about the, the website is it's very, very easily organized. So you don't need to be an expert to find your way around it and find what you're looking for. Go to rockauto.com right now, see all the parts available for your car or truck. Write Walsh in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know that we sent you. All right. Um, now, uh, Kamala Harris this week went to pay her respects to Ruth Bader Ginsburg and afterwards decided to solemnly and very respectfully use Ginsburg's death for political gain, as is the tradition in Washington, very, very, very sacred tradition. Listen to this. We are about to undertake the task of finding her replacement on the United States Supreme Court. Of course, it's hard to say those words. In truth, Ruth Bader Ginsburg cannot be replaced. She was an original, a one of a kind. She combined a steel spine with an ability to extend an open hand, never a closed fist. She demonstrated you could both hold firm to your principles and still hear those with whom you disagree. That is a lesson that should be ringing in our ears. But it looks like this president and his party are not interested in hearing any of the lessons from Justice Ginsburg. Already the president and his party have chosen to ignore Justice Ginsburg's final wish to hold off the nomination to replace her until after the next president is chosen. A wish, by the way, shared by the American people. This talking point, I mean, my God, it is so stupid. It's beyond the bounds of normal stupid. Uh, and, and they're still going with it. They're, they're going to run this thing. They're going to run with it, this final wish gambit all the way through. Uh, there is no final wish clause of the Constitution. I don't know how many times we have to explain this. The Supreme Court is not the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Final wishes are constitutionally irrelevant. Um, so this this could ju- it, it could not be less relevant than it is. The Supreme Court seats are not bequeathed to an heir. Um, you can't leave them in your will, right? So it's not going to be, uh, yeah, Grandma left you the jewelry box, and uh, oh, look at that, a, a Supreme Court seat. Congratulations. No, that's not how this works. Uh, so just what a monumentally stupid thing. Good Lord. Okay. Speaking of monumentally stupid things, number two, this is, a, this, this is real, amazingly. USA Today ran a fact check on a Babylon B article. The Babylon B article, which said that uh, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals overturned the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Now, they over, overturned her death. USA Today did some research on this, ran down some leads, hit the pavement, you know, 
And they concluded it's prob- probably not true. So this is the USA Today article. It says, the claim, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals overturned the death of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Uh, the headline of an article published by satire website, The Babylon Bee, is a nod to the contentious history between the Trump administration and the U.S. Court of Appeals. The Babylon Bee is the world's best satire site, according to its website. Supreme Court Justice uh, Ginsburg, who died of pancreatic cancer September 18th, is actually alive, the article suggests, because the Ninth Circuit overturned her death. Um, in a close decision, the judges on the court have ruled RBG's death unconstitutional and will, will block Trump from nominating a replacement, the article says. Ninth Circuit Judge Kim McLean Wardlaw was credited with issuing the ruling on the basis that Ginsburg's death was an affront to the Constitution. Um, and then it uh, goes on from there. And it finally gets to the verdict. There is no record of any ward law opinion on Ginsburg's death on the website of the Ninth Circuit. But she, they actually looked it up on the website. They looked this up on the website to see if this really happened. But she participated in a panel discussion Friday about Ginsburg's life produced by the UCLA Law School. Uh, there was no mention of reviving Ginsburg during the discussion. Okay, now, if I wanted to try really hard to defend USA Today here, I'm not sure why I'd would want to do that. But if I did, I might say that, well, you know what? Some people in this country are really, really stupid. Um, And so there may be people who are dumb enough to read that B article and not understand that it's satire. So maybe this is a reflection of America's stupidity, not USA Today's. But I can't let them off the hook that easily. I think it's a combination of both factors. Because first of all, anyone who's dumb enough to believe that a court overturned a woman's death isn't going to have the wherewithal to then go and research the claim, right? Like a person that dumb isn't going to go, hmm, let me cross-check this claim and see if it's reported in any reputable sources. No, that's just, they're just going to read it, go, uh, okay, and then stuff another Cheeto into their mouth and keep scrolling. That, that's, that's what's going to happen. So, unfortunately, USA Today uh, still must be blamed for this stupidity. Number three, the New York Post headline, Nearly 70% of Americans say they're done with coffee shops after becoming at-home baristas. It says half of Americans have become quaristas during 2020. Quaristas, like quarantine baristas. Um, okay, first of all, just it, we got to stop right there. If you have ever called yourself a quarista, that is an automatic eviction from the human race. I'm not saying you should be executed. I'm not not saying that. Mainly, I'm just saying you can't be a human anymore. We don't want you in, in the human. You can pick another species. You know, maybe see if the llamas will take you. I don't know. Uh, anyway, a survey of 2,000 coffee drinkers revealed 49% of respondents have become at-home baristas during quarantine, using their time inside to develop their coffee-making skills. Two-thirds of those have so much faith in their newfound talent, they plan to continue using their barista knowledge to make coffee in their own kitchen, even once the pandemic is over. Okay, listen, making coffee at home, we used to just call that making coffee at home. You're not an at-home barista now that you turn the coffee pot on. That's not, am I an at-home mechanical engineer because I changed the batteries in my remote? Um, No, come on. Number four, the Daily Wire, uh, let's see. Daily Wire says, actor Jason Isaacs, the man who previously called Ivanka Trump a brainless Barbie, um said that uh, non-mask wearers should be hanging in the streets or in prison. Speaking of the British daytime chats, speaking on the British daytime chat show, Lorraine, uh, Isaac said that he is actually less annoyed by non-mask wearers than he is by people who don't wear them properly, adding that non-mask wearers should be in prison or executed. Wow. You know, maybe I can't judge him for threatening to have people executed for superfluous reasons. Um, I do that like 14 times a show. I just did it a second ago, actually. But it's different when I do it. You know, that that's my thing, right? That's my, that, being, an, being an enraged lunatic is my whole deal. And everyone knows that if something is your whole deal, then it's okay. That's, that's the rule. Everyone knows that. That's, that's the old excuse. And it's a good one, I think. You know, if you're, if you're just like a, a jerk to everybody all the time, then whenever anyone accuses you of being a jerk, someone else can go, oh, that's, he's just being himself. As if the fact that you're horrible a lot makes it okay. If you're only horrible sometimes, it's not, but if you're, if you're that way all the time, you know, you're consistent about it, then it's okay. Um, anyway, this is obviously overblown. And if we're going to be doling out 
harsh mask related penalties. Um, I'd rather dole them out in the other direction. Like I, I took my kids to the beach uh, a couple days over the weekend. I took my kids to the beach, uh, all four kids by myself to the beach, by the way, um, kids seven and younger. Uh, I, I took, I don't, I don't know why I decided to do this, but we had to get them out of the house because my wife was getting the, getting the house ready to sell, staging it and everything. And, um, Anyway, I took the kids to the beach, but I, I couldn't help but notice, even though I'm I'm distracted by trying to keep track of all the all, all the kids, uh, I can still take the time to be annoyed and, and angry by things. Uh, that, that's my special skill. And the people on the beach or near the beach, like walking on the boardwalk, wearing masks. Okay, um, that if if there's going to be penalties, if I was in charge, the penalty would be for that because you look ridiculous, and there's absolutely no reason to do that. You're at the beach. Okay, you really. Th- Rather than breathing in that nice, fresh ocean air, you're going to breathe in your own fumes. You really think that's healthier for you? Really? Number five, finally, here's an article that escaped my attention a year ago, um, but I, I just saw it now because it's making the rounds again online, telling us of a certain group that I'm guessing probably with COVID has been on hiatus. So if you're looking to join the group, you'll ha- probably have to wait. But these people exist and they're out there. Um, it is, uh, here's, here's what it says, from the inquirer.com. It says, Twice a month, half a dozen men gather in Plymouth meeting uh, in a in a Plymouth meeting to help each other work through past traumas. Their chosen method of healing: cuddles. It may seem odd, but members of the men's therapeutic cuddle group say the practice has helped them cope with everything from childhood sexual abuse to the loss of family members when they were young. The two-year-old group uh, draws men from various backgrounds: a 37-year-old Mormon, 57-year-old married father of three. A 62-year-old retiree, there's a range of sexual orientations. At a time when traditional ideas of manhood are facing scrutiny and such terms as toxic masculinity are becoming widely known, uh, the group aims to provide new ways for men to express themselves. Unlike professional cuddling services, which is a thing, professional cuddling services, the group charges no fees. That's good. And members are not required to undergo training. Cuddle training. Uh, can you get a degree in cuddling? I bet you can. I bet you can. Although the meetups are not open to the public, uh, the group held a demonstration for the Inquirer. At the beginning of the session, everyone agreed not to engage in sexual touch and to ask for consent before each action. They gathered in a huddle and, and breathed meditatively. The cuddling started with men pairing up to do the motorcycle hold. This sounds horrifying already. Uh, in what in which one man sits with his back against another man's chest as if they were riding together on a motorcycle. Some massage their parent their their partner's uh, uh, shoulders or or hands while others stroked the other person's beard. Many close stroke the other person's beard. Many close their eyes as the room fell into silence. After fifty minutes, they switched to a new partner. For the second half of the session, the men cuddled as one large group in what they call a puppy pile. Men lay with their heads in each other's laps, chatted, and joked. Oh my God in heaven. God help us. God help us all. And you know, you know, you know all these dudes use emojis. Okay, so I, you know I'm right about this. I, I don't know. Do I need to spell out the issues here? Do I need to? What you find here actually illustrated in, in very disturbing and graphic detail um, is, is this fundamental misunderstanding on the left about masculinity and femininity. And they think, oh, well, you know, we just have to tear down the artifice of masculinity. We, we have to, the artificial construct of masculinity, we have to tear down um, because that's the only reason that dudes don't cuddle. They really want to deep down, but they don't because they're worried that society will frown on, you know, frown upon it. No, no, see, that's not it. Yes, society will frown upon it and should, but that's not the point. Society could give the puppy pile filled with dudes a big thumbs up, and I still would decline because the whole reason we don't associate men with cuddling isn't that men don't cuddle because we don't associate them with it. It's that we, it, it, it's that we, we don't associate them with it because they don't do it, okay, for the most part. There is something deeply ingrained, naturally ingrained in our na- in our masculine nature that makes us far less touchy feely than women. There are exceptions. Sometimes those exceptions take horrific form like this. But you're never going to build a society of cuddling men 
because most men don't have that in them, thank God. So we will continue to confine ourselves to handshakes, fist bumps, um, the off, awkward sort of half handshake, half hug thing. Or my specialty is the series of aborted greetings that you, that you get when, you know, there's two guys that don't know how the other likes to greet. And so you get the kind of going in for the handshake, the, the kind of handshake, and then it looks like they're going for a hug, and then you back up, and then it's just kind of, and you're, you know, it's like you're a video game sort of like freezing. Um, that's my move. My move, in other words, is to make everyone feel a lot less comfortable than they did before I entered the room. But they're still a lot more comfortable than they would be if I walked into the room and asked who's up for a good cuddle. Uh, I, I, I think a, that would make it far less comfortable, I think. All right, we're going to get to our daily cancellation in just a second. Um, but first, you know, we've been telling you about Helix Sleep. When you don't get a good night's rest, I think you 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 know it. Uh, you you know it the next day. You can feel it. You're feeling sore. You're feeling you're just not with it. Um, the the effects of not having a good night's sleep. And a lot of people in America don't get good night's sleep. And the health effects are um, are are it's a long list of health effects. And that's why you need Helix Sleep. Helix Sleep has a quiz that takes just two minutes to complete. Matches your body type and sleep preferences to the perfect mattress for you. If you like a mattress that's really soft or firm, uh, if you sleep on your side, or your back, or your stomach, or you sleep really hot, uh, with Helix, there's a specific mattress for each and everybody's unique taste. You don't need to take their word for it. Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress of 2019 and 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. There's a reason for that. Go to helixsleep.com, take their two-minute quiz. They'll match you to a customized uh, mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. I've done this myself. I can confirm I've taken the quiz. It didn't take very long. And they sent me a mattress that, well, it's it, it felt like it was tailor-made for me because it was. Um, right now, Helix is offering up to $200 off and free pillows with all mattress orders for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash Walsh. That's helixsleep.com slash Walsh for up to $200 off your mattress order. So go there now. And one other note, um, you know, talking about the debate, if you, if you liked our debate coverage last night, you should join Daily Wire now as an insider or all-access member. And get 20% off with code DEBATE so uh, you can watch all of our upcoming debate coverage live at dailywire.com, Apple TV, Roku app. There are going to be more debates for some reason, and uh, and so we're going to be here for that. Members also get our articles ad-free. You get access to all the live broadcasts. You get the all-access membership. You get everything. Uh, so, But also, if you want to watch the next debate with us, get 20% off your Daily Wire membership at the same time. You use code DEBATE. When you go to dailywire.com and sign up today. All right, let's get to our daily cancellation. Today for our daily cancellation, we're canceling The Atlantic for the latest and perhaps most pitiful media-generated Trump scandal, one that will likely have the same impact on the president's pres- you know, political fortunes as the stunning revelation that he doesn't pay more income tax than he owes. This time it's The Atlantic's McKay Coppins claiming that Trump mocks his Christian supporters behind their backs and speaks with, quote, cynicism and contempt about religion. And this would be mostly irrelevant, even if it was true, as I'll explain in a minute. But the specific examples provided in the article don't live up to the headline's hype, as usual. We are first regaled with a tale of Trump mocking millionaire prosperity preacher Creflo Dollar after the pastor tried to raise $60 million for a private jet. Trump allegedly called it a scam, said that Dollar is full of crap, and then added, they're all hustlers. Now, we aren't told who the all is in that context, but it seems safe to conclude that he was referring to the sorts of preachers who fly around on private jets. Assuming that, you know, uh, disgraced and currently imprisoned Michael Cohen, the source of this anecdote, can be trusted here, which is a dubious assumption to say the least, there's nothing objectionable, objectionable about any of this. Creflo Dollar is indeed a hustler who is indeed full of crap. I think I, I can speak for a great many Christians in America, except those credulous saps who actually donated to the private jet fundraiser, and say that we agree with Trump's assessment, though some of us would maybe phrase it in not exactly the same way. Uh, I mean, I would put it the same way, but uh, a lot of Christians wouldn't. Another bombshell follows, uh, quoting from The Atlantic here. The former campaign advisor recalled showing his boss a YouTube video of the Israeli uh, televangelist Benny Hinn performing faith healings while Trump laughed at the spectacle and muttered, man, that's some racket. On another occasion, the advisor told me, 
Trump expressed awe at Joel Osteen's media empire, particularly the viewership of his televised sermons. Now, our source in this case is an ex-White House official who is speaking on the condition of anonymity. Uh, the track record of, of this ex-White House official group has, of course, been, le been less than admirable. But even again, taking the supposed recollection recollections at face value, there is little here that the average conservative Christian would disagree with. Televised faith healing is a racket and also a ridiculous spectacle to behold. Now, personally, I find myself more recoiling in revulsion than laughing when I see frauds like Benny Hinn in action. But, you know, laughter is probably a better, well, certainly emotionally healthier reaction. Now, things do get a little bit edgier with the next alleged revelation. Um, again, this is from The Atlantic. It says, in Cohen's recent memoir, Disloyal, he recounts Trump returning from his 2011 meeting with pastors who laid hands on him and sneering, can you believe that bull, bull crap? But if Trump found their rituals ridiculous, he followed their money-making ventures closely. He was completely he was completely familiar with his business dealings with the business dealings of the leadership in many prosperity gospel churches. The advisor told me. Now, okay, that is probably not how most Christians would respond in a similar situation, and it may not be how Trump responded, given that we're getting this again from an incarcerated felon. But not all Christians are comfortable with having hands ritualistically laid on them in prayer. Count me among that group, in fact. Um, I generally prefer not to have strangers touch me at all for any reason. Your prayers are just as powerful without physical contact, thank you. You don't need to put your hands on me. Now, later on in the article, it's claimed that Trump also made some relatively tame jokes about Mormons, uh, Jewish people, other faith groups. You know, we're never given any examples of him specifically mocking his Christian supporters, as the headline declared. But none of this stuff matters anyway. The media has never been able to understand Trump's support among faithful Christians, and their lack of understanding has rendered useless their attempts at chipping away at it. Now, there may be a small minority of Christians who, you know, for some reason actually believe that Trump is a deeply spiritual man, but most would not be surprised to hear A.J. Delgado in The Atlantic um, describing him as, quote, not a religious guy. You know, that's not a problem because Christians are not turning to Trump for spiritual leadership or exegetical enlightenment. They probably would not want him to lead their Bible studies or take over the pastoral duties at their church. The point has always been policy. Trump has not advanced any policies that assault religious liberty or undermine the sanctity of life. On the contrary, his administration has fought for policies that protect both religious liberty and the sanctity of life. It's that simple. His personal religious views are irrelevant. Now, contrast that with a man like Joe Biden, who describes himself as devout and yet supports the butchery of unborn children and believes that nuns should be legally forced to purchase contraception. Why don't conservative Christians line up behind Biden? Well, he's an old white guy, too, so writing us off as racist or bigoted won't, won't be sufficient in this case. We don't like Biden because we find his policies to be morally appalling and in direct contradiction to Christian teaching. Whatever he personally believes, however often he prays, however, however much he goes to church, none of that mitigates the many terrible things he wishes to do with the power of the presidency should it be granted to him. That's what all this comes down to. It's not so hard to understand. And for that, The Atlantic is canceled. And everyone in media who doesn't understand this basic concept is canceled. And I am canceled too, just for the rest of the week, uh, actually, until Tuesday, because I'm taking off a few days. Uh, so that's going to do it for me, for the week. I'll see you guys back here on Tuesday. Have a great week. Godspeed. The Matt Wall Show is produced by Sean Hampton, executive producer Jeremy Boring. Our supervising producers are Mathis Glover and Robert Sterling. Our technical producer is Austin Stevens, edited by Danny D'Amico. And our audio is mixed by Robin Fenderson. The Matt Wall Show is a Daily Wire production, copyright Daily Wire 2020. Hey everybody, it's Andrew Claven, host of The Andrew Claven Show. You know, some people are depressed because the American Republic is collapsing, the end of days is approaching, and the moon has turned to blood. But on The Andrew Claven Show, that's where the fun just gets started. So come on over to The Andrew Claven Show and laugh your way through the apocalypse with me, Andrew Claven. <laughs> 